The Dr. Taz Show. The podcast, Dr. Taz. Superwoman Wellness. Here's Dr. Taz. Welcome back, everyone. Welcome back to this episode of The Dr. Taz Show, where you know that I'm determined to bring you back to your superpowered self. Joining me today is a topic and a guest we all need all about stressing less. Janet McKee is a speaker, a best-selling author, a high-performance consultant, and CEO of Sana View. She is one of only 200 elite coaches in the world certified in high performance by the High Performance Institute and is inducted as a member of the National Association of Experts, Writers, and Speakers. She's author of the new book, just released this February, Stress Less, Success, The Surprising Secrets to a Life of Passion, Purpose, and Prosperity. And that's exactly what we want to help each of you find. So welcome to the show, Janet. I'm so thrilled to have you here. How are you? Thank you, Dr. Taz. I'm thrilled to be here. Well, tell us a little bit about your journey, because you've got quite a story of your own, and you're obviously very successful in your own right, but like many success stories, I'm sure it wasn't all easy. So give us a little bit of a sense of you know, how you journeyed into understanding the formula for success without stress, which you know, we all think if we put our nose down and work super hard and don't look up, that's the formula, and many of us do that, but then get sick in the process or have other consequences and fallout. So tell us a little bit about your story. Yes, exactly. And I lived it all too well myself. I was always a high achiever, Dr. Taz, and was always striving to get to the next level and really, of course, believed that stress and struggle were the answer. And I climbed a ladder in the corporate world very rapidly and efficiently, but all of that stress and pressure after I achieved this really high powered, high pressure job in Fortune 500 company caused me to land in the hospital with a very debilitating autoimmune disease that I couldn't understand, I couldn't control, and was in the hospital unable to eat because it was too painful and I couldn't walk. Oh my goodness. Prior to that, I was a young, athletic, aggressive career woman. Right. The doctor came to me actually and said that. I was unable to walk because I was allergic to the medications for the autoimmune disease that I had developed and they wanted to start removing my organs. Oh my gosh. And, yes. Oh my this goodness. Story. And something came over me. I didn't do anything about health and well-being and so forth. And something came over me and said, no, I'm not going to do either of those. And I literally got myself out of the hospital and learned through lifestyle and foods and managing stress and all of that. I completely resolved my health challenge. And because of that, I became very inspired to help other people, went to Columbia University, studied holistic health and wellness, Fantastic. and did that for decades. And I'm, I'm no illness whatsoever. I'm de it's decades later, no illness whatsoever, no medication whatsoever. And it was a, just a situation where the doctors had given me no hope. No. But it's interesting because that challenge, right, of being in the hospital with this illness taught me so much. And now, decades later, in perfect health and so forth. So that challenge taught me a lot. But as I was working in that regard and helping other people, working with a lot of medical doctors in the whole uh, nutrition arena and wellness arena, that's when I hit the next walls of my life when my husband of 26 years walked out on me and our son in an hour's notice. What? Left me, yes. Oh. Left me not only heartbroken and our family ripped apart, but left me on the brink of financial disaster because not long before he left, he put liens on all of these investment properties that I developed with the money I made in the corporate world for financial stability for our family in order to buy a business at the time he left was failing. So I literally felt like not only was I standing on thin ice, but the roof above my head was a house of cards because he also put a lien on the home where we lived. So things were really bad, Dr. Taz. I mean, I hit every wall in I'm my life. stop you for a house. second. Let me stop you for just a minute because you're telling a story. I wish I had never heard the story before, but it is as close to us as within our own family with my sister-in-law and a lot of women out there don't realize, I don't know why we do this. We don't realize what's happening financially with our partner's business dealings and really get into hot water. Same thing happened to her as happened to other women where 
you know, your name's on every loan, your name is on every piece of paper, and then they're taking out huge debts against it, and then they disappear or run some kind of corruption scheme and get, get you in trouble, right? Like you're left holding like and being accountable to whoever. So anyhow, I mean, I feel for you. I've watched this very up close with some people I love dearly and it's incredibly yeah, it's painful. Fascinating. I mean, oh, right. painful to go through, you know, so I'm so sorry. Oh yeah, no, it's okay. Because actually now, because of what I learned. So at, after being depressed and heartbroken for a year, I remember that I used to be this happy, successful, vibrant woman. And so I went out figuratively and literally around the world and studied with world masters on success, achievement, abundance, positivity, high performance. And each one taught me something really valuable that benefited my life. And I noticed that I was seeing improvements, but I still kept feeling frustrated, like something better it was possible, but I couldn't figure out what that was. There's something missing. And that's when I made this incredible discovery that I'm going to share here in this interview that made all the difference in the world for me and also the people I was working with. Cause I do a lot of one-on-one -on -one coaching. Yeah. And it was incredible. And because of that, I realized that we think we have to stress and struggle to get to the next level. But when we break that down and we diminish the stress and we learn to open and elevate our energy, solutions and possibilities and opportunities literally flow to you. They come to you with ease instead of struggle. And greater success has been arriving at my doorstep now because of what I've discovered around this. So I'm literally now grateful for my husband for leaving and putting me through that because it was an incredible opportunity for me to learn what I've discovered that I want to share with you today. Oh my gosh. Well, we definitely want to know what that is because many of us are still not at that point yet, right? We still are very much caught in the belief that we do have to be stressed and we do have to be overburdened or overwhelmed to achieve. How did that transpire and tell us kind of what is what is the key sort of secret or nugget, so to speak, in terms of achieving our own personal success? Yes, absolutely. Okay, so as I already mentioned, we all believe that we must stress and struggle. We think that it has to be hard to get to the next level. We think that we believe we have to give up something, right? Well, I have to give up time for my family or time for my love or, or time for myself in order to achieve success. And all of that creates a restrictive and limiting energy. So when we are stressed, we literally put up walls of resistance and those walls block solutions and opportunities that you wouldn't have even thought of from coming to you and making themselves available to you. So what I started to discover is, you know, we're all told, oh, you just need to think positively, right? You need to have a positive mindset and then you will achieve great things. Well, when we're dealing with challenges, the positive mindset is not the answer. And this was where everything became apparent to me. Let me give you an example of a situation that happened in a conversation I had with a client of mine that made it clear. I was working with a woman who's 200, a CEO of a $250 million company. Mm -hmm. And she was having great success in her business, but all the stress and pressure caused her to have this pain in her abdomen. Mm -hmm. And it was getting worse and worse. And she called me, she said, Janet, business is going well. It's a lot of stress, but I'm scared because I think all the pressure from my job is causing me to create a very serious health challenge. She said, but don't worry. I know all about positive thinking and positive mindset. She said, I took all the seminars, read all the books, you know, took all the workshops. Right. And what I'm doing is I'm repeating positive affirmations to myself. And I said to her, Monica, what are you saying to yourself? She said, when I go to bed at night, I'm saying, I'm healthy, I'm healthy, I'm healthy. And that's when I realized she was forcing a positive thought about something she was fearful about. Hmm. And because of that, she was creating a worse situation for herself. Hmm. So we all hear that 
Well, when you're facing a challenge, you just need to think positively. But what I discovered is that's not correct. Positive thinking is great when things are going well. Right. right. And everything's going well and you're feeling like you're in the flow and you just think more positive thoughts. That's fabulous. But when you're hitting a challenge and just like we are in this country and around the world, there are a lot of challenges happening right now. Right. We can't just think positively. And when we do, we put more negative energy out there in the world. So remember back to me speaking to Monica, I heard her say positive thoughts but I could feel her fear hmm. instead. So there was a difference between what we're, what we're saying in our mind, our mindset and our feelings huh. create our energy. How do we shift between the two of those? Yes. How do we, it's so hard, like for high performers, it's so hard to get out of here, right? It's so hard to get out of our head. So how do we get down into our feelings a little bit better? Right. And as a matter of fact, the entire section of my books is titled, Get Out of Your Head and Into Your Energy. Because it's been proven in scientific research. Quantum mechanics is a theory within quantum physics, where scientific research has discovered that not only is everything energy, nothing is solid, everything is fluid, but they discovered that the power of their focus influenced the outcome of a scientific study. So they never realized that what they thought about and that energy behind it can affect everything around you. So this is the empowerment piece. Mm -hmm. When you understand that you're not a victim of what's happening around you, that you have the ability to create more elevated and expanded energy within you, that then everything around you begins to reflect it back. So here's what I told Monica. I said, Monica, imagine that you're on a ladder and right now, you're on the low rung of a ladder. She's thinking fears of thought, feeling, you know, thoughts and feelings of fear and, and anger and frustration. And, and she was scared because she was feeling this pain in her abdomen. Mm -hmm. If you're on the low rung of a ladder and you try to leap to a top rung of a ladder in one thought, what's going to happen is you're going to fall off the ladder and break your leg or worse. You cannot leap from fear to positive mindset in one leap. So here's what I did with her. And this will answer your question. I said, let's go one rung at a time. I said, Monica, you're a smart woman, right? Yes, I am. And your body is telling you that something's out of balance. Yes, it is. So your body is experiencing pain because it's letting you know that something needs to change. Yes, it does. And you're a smart woman you will begin to discover ideas and solutions to help you diminish the stress and improve your health. Yes, I will. So do you see what we're doing? We're thinking smaller thoughts that feel better because mm -hmm. she believed them, mm -hmm. right? It's like climbing the ladder one rung at a time and grabbing a hold of each rung with solid footing. Mm -hmm. So this is very different because the important thing to pay attention to is how the thought makes you feel. It's your feelings that create your energy and everything you give off is what you get back in life, right? You know this, if you walk into a meeting and you're really angry and you're frustrated because you got stuck in traffic or whatever, you walk into that meeting, people can sense it from you. And that meeting tends not to go as well. Right. Compared to those days that you feel fabulous and you're in the flow, everything seems to go well. Well, you think it's everything on the outside happening to you or for you, but it's not. It's coming from you. And so no longer do we need to be victims of what's happening around us when we learn that it's our energy that's within us that's created from our feelings that influence what happens around us, then we realize we have our power back and we are able to create from that. So it's the energy, not your thoughts necessarily. And I've heard, um, you know, I find this whole topic immensely fascinating because it's so counterintuitive to the way many of us are raised where we can control our outcomes and and then it's also counterintuitive to, as you were saying, the secret where like, you know, if we just, being positively will attract like tons of stuff into our lives. 
But many very sophisticated energy healers are saying exactly what you're saying, that it is here, the heart center, it is our feelings, it is our emotions that really determine our reality. So it took me a while even to understand and master that concept, but even having mastered and understood it and accepted it, to then wrestle with feelings and to manage feelings and control feelings and, and help our feelings, well, that's another whole challenge. So what would you say to that yes. when there's all this stuff going on, right? And feelings come from different places, right? They come from external stress. They come from internal trauma or how you grew up. They come from chemistry as a doctor. I, can, I know for a fact that your feelings change dependent on your chemistry, especially for those of us as women. And so how do we wrestle with our feelings when we're so head trained and now our head accepts what you're saying, but how do we get back here into our feelings so that we can change our reality? Yes. So hard. Okay. You said something very, very important. You said sometimes it's really hard to wrestle with some of those negative feelings or whatever. When you wrestle, when you fight against something, when you push against something, you give it power. So I'm never about fighting negative thoughts or emotions. I'm never about trying to wrestle those or change those because you can't. Hmm. And the more you try to wrestle bad feelings to the ground or change thoughts or push against negativity, you're giving all of that power. So let's look at this. Okay, so that's, so two things are very different here. One, people say, oh, just think positively, everything will be okay. Right. And right. that's not the case. It's really the energy you give off, which comes from your feelings. We just said that. Mm -hmm. but now, how do we do that? And it's not about controlling anything. If you try to control anything, you're making it harder than it has to be. So it's not about controlling. And, and that's where it comes back to the mindset. Have you ever heard people say, oh, you just need to control your thoughts. Have you ever tried to control your thoughts 100% of the time? You can't. Right. It's impossible. So give that up. It's not about, it's all about doing things that help you feel better. So number one, you know this, this is part of what you teach. Number one, the foundation is taking good care of yourself, right? When you get high quality rest, and you drink fresh water, and you eat real food grown from mother nature, not a bunch of chemicals from a lab, and you move your body and you breathe fresh air, it's common sense. You will have more clarity and more energy, and you're better able to deal with the stress of your life, right? Mm -hmm. Or if somebody says something to you or something happens that's uncomfortable, right? When you're rested, you're better able to deal with it. Definitely. Definitely. The, so number one, wellness is the foundation. And that's the foundation of a successful life period. And that came out of 20 years of research that we did with the High Performance Institute. Mm -hmm. The world's most accomplished people are crystal clear that they must have good health and well-being. So they make wow. that priority number Wait, one. Say that again. Say that again. I want to make sure everybody heard that because we will often push that to the bottom. Say that again because that's my mission and my passion. So I want you to definitely say it again. The world's most accomplished people, the world's most successful people, and which, by the way, these are not people just successful in business. What we look at as a true successful person is, we call a high performer, somebody that looks at every area of their life. You know, when your relationships are good, your work goes well. Mm -hmm. right? Or when you're having a challenge in your relationships, you go to work feeling depleted. So everything, your relationships, your health and well-being, your spiritual life, your hobbies, your work, but they know that wellness is number one. Mm -hmm. They have got to be rested and nourished properly to have the energy and clarity to create a successful life. And just right there, if you take good care of yourself, and you know this is common sense, right? But we don't do it. So many people don't do it. People believe that if they stay up late and they get up early exhausted and they drink their cup of coffee, that they're striving for success. Mm -hmm. What we found is the opposite happens. So wellness, taking care of yourself, being healthy is the number one priority for a successful life. So imagine now you're rested, you're eating healthy, you're drinking your water, 
So now you have better energy too. Mm -hmm. And that's physical energy. It's mental energy, but it's also this overall energy that you give off. You know, when somebody's feeling fabulous, you look at them and say, wow, what's going on with them? You can right. feel it from them. Okay. So number one, take care of yourself. Number two, watch how your thoughts make you feel. And again, don't try to wrestle with negative thoughts, feelings, or emotions. You don't wrestle them. And as a matter of fact, negative thoughts are actually a positive thing. And I'll explain that right now. Okay. Instead of wrestling against these, let me use an analogy. Imagine you're going down the highway. You're driving down the highway and you're heading for the life of your dreams. And you start to daydream and your car starts to veer off the road and it hits those rumble strips, right? Boom, 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 boom. Well, those rumble strips keep you from driving off the cliff, right? They're a good thing. Mm -hmm. So are your negative thoughts and emotions. First of all, we're human. We're going to have all different kinds of thoughts and emotions. That's part of being human. So you don't wrestle against them. You accept them. You allow them to flow in and out. Doesn't that feel different than wrestle? It feels better. Yes. To just, yeah. But then when you know that, wait a minute, I'm feeling uncomfortable. I'm feeling a discomfort, which means I'm having a negative thought or emotion. You're like, okay, wait a minute. That's just the red flag. It's the rumble strips telling me that my energy is off. And so I'm veering off my path of the life that I want right? Mm -hmm. So I need to get back on my clear path going forward. So how do I do that then? I talked about climbing the ladder little by little with thoughts that feel better, just little thoughts that feel better. But then when you get to that rung and it doesn't feel good anymore on the subject that you're concerned about, you walk away from the subject, you walk away from that ladder and do anything and everything that helps you feel better. This is so simple, but it's not always easy. It right. takes practice. So let me give you some ideas. Yeah, that'd be great. For many people, prayer, meditation, right? Just helps you feel better. I love to dance and sing to music that's uplifting. Every morning, I'll put my earbuds in and I dance and sing around my house while I'm making breakfast. Like I want my day to start by feeling fabulous. I'm not focused on the news. I'm not worried about what's going to happen in my day. I'm creating the foundation of my day, which is joy and fun and happiness. Get outside in mother nature, walk your dog, pet your cat, work in your garden. Do these things that help you to feel better. Mm -hmm. Because as you feel better, you're experiencing less stress. And when you experience less stress, you no longer have those walls of resistance and solutions and opportunities and possibilities flow to you wow. with ease. So wellness, number one. Number two, recognize when you're feeling uncomfortable, which means you're hitting your rumble strips, that some kind of thought or feeling or emotion is arising that's taking you off your path of good energy. Try to climb the ladder, but if not, get away from it, walk away, leave it go for a while mm -hmm. and do anything that feels better. And then when you come back to the subject that's challenging you, you're going to have clearer thinking and more positive energy, and you will be able to discover solutions. I love it. Can we have one more secret that you can share with us? We're on two. Let's get one more in if it's possible. Okay, well, let's look at this, okay? We now, we've talked about how it's not just about positive thinking, okay? It's about how does, how do you actually feel? And I want you to recognize this now. This is important. So when you, the, 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 secret, the final secret is become aware of your energy and to just do anything to improve your energy before you take action. So you're aware now that it's not just your thoughts. So think about this. A, a word can have a negative connotation like challenge. Yeah. So some people might look at, think of this word challenge. Be like, oh no, this is going to be so hard. This is going to be a struggle, right? This makes me really anxious. Yeah. Some people look at a challenge 
like, okay, this is something that's, I'm going to roll up my sleeves. I'm going to uncover solutions, right? So one word can have either an uncomfortable feeling or it could have some excitement behind it. So the idea here, Dr. Taz, is to just always generate this more comfortable energy while you're going through life because every challenge creates desire for better. I told you about all my challenges, right? And each one taught me how to be stronger and wiser. Right. I am grateful for each challenge. Landed in the hospital with an illness, my husband walking out on me, financial disaster. Each one taught me so much. So if each challenge is an opportunity to fuel desire, to fuel creation, I want everyone to begin to look at their lives like a painting. You are a painter and you have a goal to have a painting. But when you have the painting on the wall, that's great. But the desire and the creation comes from the painting process where you pick the colors and the textures and the forms. So this is life. Life is this process of creation, but you've got the power now to create a better outcome by just being aware of how you're feeling. Get out of your head into your energy. Do anything that helps you feel better to elevate and expand how you feel. Get yourself in the flow before taking any action and you are going to get an incredible result. So wellness matters. The second one, again, repeat the second and third ones again for us, everyone. Okay, learn to climb the ladder from yeah. low energy thoughts and feelings, slightly climb the ladder, don't try to leap to positive thoughts. The next step is when you can't go any further, walk away from the ladder and do anything that helps you feel better, like dance and sing, prayer, meditation, right? Do any of these things, find what helps you to feel better. Then recognizing you don't need to fight against old beliefs or fears or patterns. They're all part of life. You're not going to fight against anything, but you're going to do, you're in this creation process. You're creating the masterpiece of your life, the painting masterpiece of your life. So you're just going to do things to choose good energy before taking action. As you improve your energy all throughout your day, each and every day, it's a practice. It's an ongoing, deliberate right. intent. Right. Before you take action, you are going to get an incredible result. I love it. I think that's amazing. Now, um, one more, I'm not going to use the word challenge. <laughs> one more thing to throw. <laughs> well, it can be a good word. It can be a good word. One more thing to throw at you. Um, so in an environment like today, right, where you make any turn, you know, even if you turn away from the media or away from the news and you turn to your next door neighbor or to a client or to whoever, there is just pervasive fear, you know, like you can feel it, you can sense it. Even if you yourself are trying to do what you can to keep yourself uplifted and positive, it starts to build. How do we each protect ourselves from giving into the fear you know, my concern is that this is our greatest spiritual test as a global community is how are we going to come out of this? Are we going to come out fearful, pointing fingers at each other and angry and separated? Or are we going to come out united, hopeful, and ready for whatever's next? So how do we each take some responsibility in that? How do we each own that, you know, as we're going through this environment of negativity, of fear, of anger, of sort of one person pitting another person against each other. What do you say to that kind of looking at a global scale? Yes, absolutely. There is no better time than now than to learn what I'm teaching you. You know, and please understand, I, I could not have planned releasing Stress of Success February, right before a pandemic hits, right? How do you plan that? But that's part of, I've been working my energy and to see how things just happen. Yeah. So there's no better time than now than to learn this. And in Stressful Success, I take every reader by the hand and walk them through exactly step-by-step step on what to do. But here's the thing, I already told you, I get 
good, I get high quality rest. I wake up, I choose a thought that's going to create a good feeling for my day. I don't let thoughts of worry and fear just happen. I reach for feelings. I create feelings that today's going to be a good day. I'm going to learn something interesting. I do all the wellness things, drink fresh water, eat good foods, move my body. So I'm already feeling good. I'm listening to high powered music. I'm creating that. So then when I have to see the news, and see what's happening. I'm not coming from a depleted state. I'm coming from an elevated state. And then you just focus on, okay, you need to be aware of the facts of what's happening. But are you going to focus on all the fear? Or are you going to focus on the fact that, okay, we have so many brilliant researchers coming up with treatments and vaccines and whatever your beliefs are on that. And we are strong, intelligent people. 96% of the people really are having mild symptoms through this. So the, right. the idea here is, what are you focusing on? Right. You're going to put all your focus on the fear. It's okay to be aware of, of the concern because it is serious. I'm not diminishing that. Be aware of the things to be that are happening to be concerned of, but then just be at a level of acceptance that, okay, this is happening but we are going to get through this. We have brilliant people all over the world studying this and solving this. And I know that stress suppresses my immune system, right? You know this. Yes. My immune system. And that the best thing I could do for myself right now is to do anything that helps me feel better. And it's okay. It doesn't mean you need to feel bliss about what's happening, but just find acceptance. Acceptance is like a neutral energy. And then do things that feel better. Do anything, prayer, meditation, all of those things I said. Focus on those things that feel better. Do not spend your day focusing on reasons for fear because it's so important for you, for you and everyone right now that you diminish the stress, manage it so that you support your immune system so that you're strong through this. So it's all based, Dr. Taz, on what you're focusing on. You can sit there all day in front of the news and just, just sit and wallow in all the fear and victimhood. Yeah. Or you can take your power back and understand that everything comes from your energy. So do those things I talked about and the outcome for your life is going to be better than ever. I think that's a great place to stop right there. Such incredible advice, especially in these times, directing us all to really paying attention to how we feel and our reality is what we focus on. That is, that is the message from so many great healers and leaders and from our esteemed guest today. Thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to join us on this episode of the Dr. Tash Show. Janet, if folks want to get a hold of you, connect with you, what is the best way for them to do that? Well, JanetMcKee.com is my main site for speaking and coaching and writing and so forth. But if they want a, just a media quick download, visit StresslessSuccess.com. That's the name of the book, Stressless Success. You get immediate three-day banish burnout plan so that you get results about some of the things we talked about. And you also have an option. I decided, I already hit bestseller list in five categories. I decided to give the book away for free because of everything that's happening. Yeah. So it's justlesssuccess.com. You have the option to get a free paperback. You just need to pay shipping. Oh, wonderful. Well, thank you again for joining. I learned so much today. I hope everybody else did as well. Thank you, Dr. And for everyone listening or watching this episode of the Dr. Taz Show, remember that we are on Spotify as well, and you can take some time out to rate and review it and share it with your friends. And I will see you all next time. Thank you again, Janet, for joining us. And I hope you guys all have an amazing day.